Ever since its release, Jurassic World Evolution 2 has been an absolute pleasure to play. With over 70 species of prehistoric animals and a diverse range of maps from across the globe, there are limitless ways to build your park. The entire game is a refreshing improvement to its predecessor, and I find myself coming back to it time and time again for the myriad of ways it rewards you for your creativity. That being said, it's not all perfect. Jurassic World Evolution 2 has a number of shortcomings which, if you're starting out, may work against you. If you're looking to unleash your creativity, a lot of the content feels gated behind core missions, forcing you to grind your way to unlock everything beforehand. I'll expand on that in a moment. Evolution 2 brought with it a much needed overhaul to the interactions between dinosaurs. Watching your animals ponder about their enclosure is no longer reduced to simple mundane activities. Animals will sleep, roll about, and even show affection to one another. Releasing your dinosaurs into the park is now a theatrical experience, made all the more exciting with special animations and different camera angles. Managing your park becomes much more immersive, and it gives you valid reasons not just airlift your animals into the enclosure. Special noteworthy releases include the Allosaurus, the Indominus Rex, and for some strange reason, Liplerodon. On a similar note, the social animations give dinosaurs much needed animalistic behavior. I was missing in the first game. Both interspecies and intraspecies interactions help to characterize the creatures. Some of them play, wrestle, and nudge one another, while others snap at each other for getting on their nerves. Hunting and combat animations have been fully realized. Raptors now learn to hunt in packs, armored herbivores fight one another, and there's unique finishing blows for some of the large carnivore battles. These are all small little details I know, but they make the game that much more replayable and flesh out the animals' behaviors. The sheer range of skins available on release is a much welcome revision to the skin system overall. All your dinosaurs have a base color and a pattern color from which you can select or randomize. Evolution 1 lacked the same range of skins on its release and locked its best skins to Jurassic Park themed ones behind paid DLC content, which I'm glad is not a recurring theme for the sequel. While I am hoping to see more variations in the future, I am very happy that Frontier released the game with a healthy amount of skins at launch. But I am hoping that there is a way to preview the dinosaur's appearance uh, before we synthesize its DNA in the near future so that we can clearly see what we're going to release. Being able to observe aquatic reptiles swim about an impossibly large tank has kindled my childhood dreams. There's just so much attention and detail given to the aquatic and aerial reptiles that it's hard to build a park without them. I love that we're able to customize our aviaries with all the terrain tools and features you would naturally use for the dinosaur enclosures. Back in Evolution 1, the aviaries added to the game in the final DLC were a major disappointment. They were static set pieces, with the Pteranodons only able to fly from a handful of predetermined locations. With Evolution 2, the sky is the limit. Pterosaurs are able to fly about their enclosure freely, eat from fish feeders, and perch on whatever rocks you place about. Likewise, the aquatic animals get massive tanks to explore, and I love being able to lower and raise the stands to get a better view of them. There's only a handful of species currently available, but I'm sure we'll get an expanded list in the coming months. I expect we'll get to see Quetzalcoatlus in the game, given how it features in Jurassic World Dominion's prologue. And moreover, I'd like to see the diverse ways in which we can observe animals such as gondolas in the aviaries, and maybe sea floor tunnels or submersibles as an option for the aquatic enclosures. Part of the reason I'm really excited to see Jurassic World Dominion is because we're getting dinosaurs beyond the scope of lush rainforests and redwoods. With Evolution 2, we're already one step ahead in that regard. We get to experience all these beautiful animals in sand and snow in addition to the familiar film locations. From the tranquil deserts of Arizona to the gorgeous mountainside views of Northwest USA, Evolution 2 offers us a much needed reprieve from the island hopping scenes we're all too familiar with. The campaign, while boring, also offers Pennsylvania, which is an absolutely stunning autumn backdrop. Just having sauropods sticking their heads above an orange and yellow tree line is a magical experience unto itself, and it's why I can spend hours soaking up the ambience of this game. Coming off the heels of Planet Zoo, I don't think Jurassic World Evolution 2 lends itself well to people who just want to play creatively. The game pushes you to experience its narrative campaigns, which would be fine if they were enjoyable. 
but instead as a sandbox player you have to grind hours of tedious content in order to unlock all the buildings, dinosaurs and skins necessary for your sandbox mode. I get that the campaign serves as a quick tutorial and it would be fine if it was just the campaign missions, but those don't unlock you anything more than a handful of maps and dinosaurs. You're forced to play challenge modes in order to get the maps, the necessary skins and the animals themselves. It's also not clear what animals you are available to you at each mission. So you're playing a guessing game every time you boot up one of the challenge modes or chaos theory modes. Even then, you're forced to build a control center, a staff center, hire scientists and raise their skills in order to hatch dinosaurs in your sandbox. I feel like this is a significant step back from what players really want. We shouldn't be too shoehorned into playing everything just to unlock content for sandbox. While I do enjoy micromanaging the park, I feel there were really a lot of unnecessary steps involved. One strange addition to Jurassic World Evolution 2 was the need for three separate vehicles to deal with dinosaurs. The ranger jeeps should be able to sedate, medicate, and scan just fine. It'd be nice if the MVU was able to transport smaller dinosaurs, but since that's not the case, it's a strange addition to the park right now. There's no reason the helicopters can't do the same either. That's also before I get into how needlessly annoying it is to deal with sick animals. Not only should the process require one vehicle, but you need to scan, tranquilize, extract said dinosaur to the vet, and then assign a scientist to it before you can release it back into the park. It's a lot of steps and a lot of time, which when dealing with a whole herd of sick struthiomimuses is not actually very practical at all at the end of the day. Jurassic World Evolution 2 offers a much needed overhaul of the first game, with a vast range of maps, species and skins to work with that lend itself to spectacular sights. The game however does feel a bit too needlessly bogged down by forcing you to play through its underwhelming campaign in order to unlock dinosaurs and building for s buildings for sandbox. I can't wholeheartedly recommend this to anyone who has limited time to play but wants to go crazy with the sandbox features. Evolution 2 just feels a little bit too tedious for those uh, who just want to be creative. But despite my criticisms, it is a beautiful game with a great development team and I am excited to see what will come in the future with the release of Jurassic World Dominion and perhaps beyond. Stuff like a different Giganotosaurus skin, the Quetzalcoatlus hopefully, Therizinosaurus, Pyroraptor um, and Atrociraptor I think are definitely going to make for fun additions to the park. I know there's always mods, but I'm still holding out to see what Frontier can deliver with their excellent work so far. That's all I have to say for now, thank you so much for watching this video and let me know what you want to hear more of in the future. Bye for now and please stay tuned.